Hi folks, so this is a brief overview slash review of logarithms and exponentials because this topic really is important when it comes to understanding nonlinear models, specifically exponential growth and decay models and power law models. So uh, most of us should remember exponentials, right? So for example, if we take 10 to the power two or 10 squared, that's the same thing as multiplying 10 by itself twice, 10 times 10, and that's 100. Or, for example, 10 to the fourth, that means multiplying 10 by itself four times, and the number you get there is 10,000, okay? Uh, so how about this? All right, let's try something subtly different uh, when it comes to exponentials. Let's try this, 10 to the power x equals a million. Now, you notice that this is exactly the same kind of expression that we work with up here. Up here, we, we knew the power of 10, and we just calculated the result on the right-hand side. This is the same kind of equation, but it says we know the result on the right-hand side, and we're trying to figure out what power x we have to raise 10 to in order to produce this given result that we've specified over here. Uh, now, this statement right here, uh, if we say, well, what, x must, uh, what must x be here? Uh, it's pretty clear that x has to be 6. And the reason, uh, if you ask why must that be, is because 10 to the power 6, that's 10 times 10 times 10, 6 times here, that is 1 million. And you can do that either just adding them up yourself, 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000, etc., or you could plug it into a calculator if you want. So x here is the solution to this equation, 10 to the x equals a million. Now, we can s express this relationship right here, 10 to what power equals a million, using a log. And the way we would do it like this is to say that log base 10 of 1 million equals 6, okay? And if we take this statement right here and this statement right here, these are exactly the same. Right? They are both expressing the idea that we have to raise 10 to the power 6 in order to get a million. This is just putting x up here in the exponent, and this is saying, well, um, we need a function that actually gives us this number, right? What power of 10 uh, do I need in order to get a given result? And that function is the logarithm, log base 10 of a million. So this expression says exactly the same thing as this does up here. What power do I have to raise 10 to in order to get this result? And the answer is six. Uh, let's try another one with maybe a different base right here, okay? Let's try it base two right here. Let's try to answer the question, what power must I raise two to in order to get 16. So 2 to what power x equals 16? Well, this implies that x must equal 4, right? And the reason is that 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 2 to the fourth power, equals 16. So 4 is the number that solves this equation for x. Now set in logs, right? Our equivalent way of representing this, we would say that log base 2 of 16 is equal to 4. Again, these two statements say exactly the same thing. What power x must I raise 2 to in order to get 16? The answer is 4. This says the same thing. What power must I raise 2 to in order to get 16? That's the base 2 logarithm of 16, and the answer is 4. Okay, let's try one more over here with a maybe a less familiar base of the logarithm. Let's try this. Let's try e to the x equals 20 0.085 looks totally arbitrary, right? And what, do you, what is this e right here? Well, this is what's called the base of the natural logarithm. It's the number 2.718 uh, dot dot dot. It is a, an irrational, in fact, a transcendental number, a number that never ends and never repeats, kind of like pi. Uh, and uh, that just happens to be the value, 2.718, with a whole bunch of other decimal places after it. Okay, well, uh, it turns out that e times e times e, if you just take this number, 2.718 dot dot dot, and you uh, multiply it by itself three times, that's e to the third, the number you get is very roughly 20.085. So that implies that in our equation up here, x must equal three, okay? And again, set in logs right here, we would say that log base e 
of 20.085 is equal to 3. Now, usually when we're talking about log base E, uh, we omit the base right here. So we would just say log of 20.085 equals 3. Uh, you may have used the notation if you took uh, you know, a course that had logarithms in it in high school, uh, ln for natural log. Most of the rest of the world doesn't do that. They just say log for natural log. And any other base, whether it's base 10 or base 2 or base 3 or whatever, gets an explicit notation for the base. Okay, so that's what logs look like, right? And that's kind of the point of logs, is it's something that allows us to figure out what power of a given number we have to raise that number to in order to arrive at a given result. Now, let's look at a couple of basic rules for logarithms. And this is going to illustrate to you why logarithms are actually useful for understanding certain kinds of mathematical phenomena. All right, so let's get a new page over here. Uh, and let's talk about our two, there's lots of rules for logarithms. Let's talk about our two most important ones. Okay, so rule one is the following, that if I take the log of A times B, that's the same thing as the log of A plus the log of B. And I haven't put a base here, so you might assume, well, he only means natural log for that. That's actually not true. This rule is uh, the same thing regardless of what base you have, as long as it's the same base in all three of those logs. This would hold if they were all log 10 or all log 2 or all natural log, log base E, uh, as I've written here. Okay, so let's just see a couple of examples of this, right? So, uh, you know, example A right here. Let's try this. Log base 10 of 10 times, uh, let's do it, uh, 100 times 1,000 right there. Well, according to our rule up here, that if I have the logarithm of the product, it's the sum of the two individual logarithms, this is equal to log base 10 of 100 plus log base 10 of 1,000. Uh, and this is uh, asking, what power do I have to raise 10 to to get 100? And that answer is 2. What power do I have to raise 10 to to get 1,000? That number is 3, because 10 to the third power, 10 times 10 times 10, gets you 1,000. So that means this number is 5. Okay, so we computed the logarithm of the product as the sum of these two individual logs, and the answer is 5. Let's try another example right here. How about this? Log base 2 of 256 times 32. Well, this is the same thing. According to our rule, uh, logarithm of the product of two numbers is the sum of the individual logarithms. So this is log base 2 of 256 plus log base 2 of 32. This number right here, what power do I need to raise 2 to in order to get 256? The answer is Eight. And I always remember that because 8-bit graphics, 8 powers of 2, gets you 256 colors for my uh, Nintendo days as a child. So that number is 8. This number right here, what power do I have to raise 2 to in order to get 32? Well, 2 times 2 times itself 5 times gets you 32. So this number is 5. And the answer is 13. Again, the log of the product is the sum of the individual logs. And this is giving you some indication of why logarithms are useful is because they turn multiplication here, which is, uh, I don't know about you, but uh, kind of a harder thing to do, into addition over here. And that actually historically is why logarithms were used, is because it was hard to multiply very large numbers. But if they could look up the logarithms of those numbers in a table, and then add the two logarithms together, get a result, and say, well, what number does this correspond to? 2 to the 13th power. Go look it up on the table again, and bingo, you've just figured out a way to multiply two very large numbers without ever having to write it all out as a really tedious product using kind of the grade school rules of multiplication. That actually is indeed the historical reason why logarithms were useful. All right, let's try our second rule right here. Okay, rule number two. Again, lots of rules for logarithms, but this is undoubtedly, uh, for our purposes at least, the, uh, the, the second of our two important rules. And it's the following. It's that if I have the logarithm of a power, log of a to the power b, this is the same thing as b times log of a. Okay, so let's try an example here, right? Example a. Let's try this. Let's try log base 10 of 1,000 to the power 5. That's a big number, right? 1,000 to the power 5 is a very large number. Uh, well, we can apply our rules right here. This is the same thing, all right, as I've got this is my A and this is my B. 
So this is equal to 5 times log base 10 of 1,000. Uh, and this is log base 10 of 1,000. Well, that number is 3 because 10 to the third power equals 1,000. This is 5 times 3. And the answer is 15. Great. Let's try a second example, B. How about this one? Log base 2 of 64 to the 11th power. By our rule, this is our A, this is our B. I've got A to the power B. That's the same thing as taking this exponent right here, 11, bringing it out front like this, times log, of, uh, log base 2 of 64. This is 11 times, well, what's log base 2 of 64? What power do I have to raise 2 to in order to get 64? Uh, that number uh, is, let you pause for a minute there, it's 6, right? Because 2 times itself 6 times gets you 64. So this whole thing is 11 times 6, and that's 66. All right, so these are admittedly kind of toy, uh, kind of math problem type examples that illustrate the underlying rules of logarithms, and they are the two most important rules for us to be able to understand the core statistical relationships in this course of exponential growth and decay and power laws. More on those later.